This is the third and final video in my three-part series on the equipment I carried during my fastest known time attempt of the Superior Hiking Trail. In this video, we'll be covering the following gear categories. Repair Kit, Hygiene Kit, and First Aid Kit. The first category covers my repair kit. Occasionally stuff breaks and you've got to address it while out on the trail. My repair kit covers only the necessities and comes in at half an ounce for items packed in a small Ziploc bag contained in my clothing bag and another half ounce for items permanently stored on my trekking pole and backpack. Inside the bag contains a couple different types of Dyneema composite repair tape. If a branch decides to fall and compromise my tarp overnight or I set one of my dry bags down on something sharp, I've got some lighter weight repair tape to fix them permanently. If the most dreaded of all creatures in the North Woods decides to chew a small hole in my backpack, I've got some thicker Dyneema tape for that. And no, I'm not talking about bears, it's those damn red squirrels you gotta watch out for. A small tube of Loctite super glue has a million uses and ranks right up there behind a bandana for the number of uses that it has. From makeshift stitching of wounds and temporary securing of dental work to fabric and gear repair, super glue should have a place in everybody's repair kit. Finally, my small Ziploc bag contains two rolls of thread. One normal fabric thread and the other is dental floss. Dental floss is great for pack strap repairs or other items that require something a bit more heavy duty. My large headed needle is contained in a small piece of gaffer's tape. My other two items are outside of my backpack. I use a classic SD Swiss Army knife for a variety of things, from cutting open packaging, cutting clothing and medical supplies, removing ticks, and picking junk out of my teeth. This small .7 ounce multi-tool comes in handy and is barely noticed on my pack. I've added another .4 ounce retractor to it. This knife is so small, I'm always afraid of losing it, and most often need it while I'm actually wearing my pack, so having it on a small retractor keeps it in the same place every time. The last item that I consider part of my repair kit that we've already discussed briefly resides on my trekking pole. Gorilla tape can be used for a variety of repairs, especially if the Dyneema repair tape just isn't enough. From water bottles to shoe repair, Gorilla Tape can be a hiker's best friend. The tape I'm using comes in at .18 ounce per foot, and I've wrapped about 10 feet of this tape around the top of my trekking pole, bringing the tape weight to about 1.8 ounces. My last category is first aid and hygiene, and is one of those categories of equipment where hikers can definitely overload themselves. Most of my 8.83 ounces of weight focuses on chafing, inflammation, and blister treatment and prevention. All of the items I'm about to mention, plus my repair kit, fit snugly inside of this .31 ounce Gossamer Gear Dyneema zippered stuff sack, all with the really cool first aid sticker on the front. Uh, yep, uh-huh, I'm that guy. The number one concern I have on the trail is chafing. Doing 40 to 50 miles a day puts a literal strain on parts of my body that I've never had to deal with before. And as wrong as this sounds, I know from experience that my gooch area is going to take a pounding. Um, maybe I want to rephrase that. Either way, the constant rubbing action down there over time can cause quite a bit of irritation, so much so that it becomes absolutely painful to walk. That becomes a problem when you're trying to break records. To help combat this, I've got a solid plan. Each morning I'll be applying 5 grams of white petrolatum to myself, with a second application during my 20 mile break. Each pack weighs .17 ounces. Applied twice daily, I'll be carrying a total weight of 2.72 ounces of this stuff which apparently is also good for minor cuts and burns. Before heading to bed each evening, the chafing regimen continues. After doing a bit of cleanup to the area, I'll be applying 5 grams of chamoisin to the area. Chamoisin is a moisture barrier with healing ingredients such as zinc oxide, aloe, chamomile, and manuka honey. Some of the same ingredients used to help babies with diaper rash. I'll have 8 of these coming in at 1.36 ounces. Attention to my feet is just as important. My feet will most likely be wet for good portions of the day, and it's important that my feet don't dry out overnight and crack. For this, Joshua Tree comes to the rescue with their climbing sap. A light coating each night to my tootsies after they've been cleaned and dried will help prevent cracked feet. The small jar comes in at 1.76 ounces. Pain and swelling are an expected part of any backpacking trip. When you're pushing big miles for 16 hours a day, pain and swelling are going to be a big part of your fatigue early the next morning. To help combat that, I'll be taking a regimen of ibuprofen and turmeric each night before bed. While ibuprofen is controversial and a bad idea to mask your pain, while you're actively hiking the trail, it can work in combination with the healing powers of your body, aided by the anti-inflammatory properties of turmeric while you're sleeping. Your sleep cycle is very important to the healing process your body will need each night. 
I've put 32 ibuprofen in a small sliding matchbox that comes in at 0.56 ounces. A little wrap of duct tape around the box helps keep it from breaking down. In addition to ibuprofen and turmeric, a few other medications make it into a small separate matchbox. Imodium is indispensable if I suddenly find myself with some gastrointestinal issues. Contaminated food, poor hygiene, and sketchy water sources can turn a good trip bad, and I'll need to be prepared, even if it means keeping me well enough to limp it off the trail. Finally, diphenhydramine, better known as Benadryl, always finds a home in the matchbox with my Imodium. Yellow jacket nests have been reported in numerous places along the Superior Hiking Trail this year, and late summer and early fall, these winged devils are out in full force. It's better to be prepared with an antihistamine if I find I've accidentally pissed these little buggers off and they sting me. For hot spot and blister relief, I'm bringing six strips of KT tape, better known as kinesiology tape. This stuff is absolutely amazing and has many uses beyond blister management. Addressing cuts and abrasions, equipment repair, and supporting strained muscle groups are just some of the things that this tape is good for. Six strips of the extreme tape come in at 0.48 ounces. Sometimes blisters are inevitable, even with the best precautions. Keeping a threaded needle encased in neosporin can be used to lance a blister, allowing for controlled weepage and eventual drying out of the blister. The antibiotic will help keep the blister from becoming infected. I keep one alcohol wipe in the small bag to wipe down the area before lancing the blister with the needle. The entire blister bag comes in at only 2.2 grams. For larger scrapes and cuts, I keep a tiny tube of neosporin antibiotic ointment. I purchased a large bag of these tubes with a built-in applicator tip online on Amazon. They're designed for cosmetic samples, but work great for this purpose. Filled with neosporin, the product plus applicator cap weighs only 0.12 ounce. If the unfortunate happens and I really whack myself a good one and can't control the bleeding, I carry one packet of wound seal. This is a topical hemostatic powder that's going to burn like hell when you apply it, but it does a great job at stopping the bleeding. Just ask Trips when she lopped off her fingertip with a mandolin. One packet of this stuff at .03 ounces did the trick. If I happen to lose my water filter, it freezes, or just plain stops working, I do carry a strip of 10 MSR Aquatabs. Each tablet treats up to 2 liters of water. This gives me 20 liters of water, if necessary, with a strip of 10 tablets and comes in at 0.05 ounces. The last set of items in my hygiene and first aid kit are my dental supplies. One shortened toothbrush and small bag of tooth powder come in at a whopping 0.24 ounces. I thought I was cool with my travel toothpaste until trips turned me on to tooth powder. While I don't use this stuff in my normal non-trail life, on trail it's a real weight saver and does a really good job at making your teeth feel squeaky clean. And it looks like you've just gargled with a mouthful of mud when you're done doing it. To me, <laughs> it just looks like proper hiker trash. Well, that's it, kids, for the final installment in my three-part What's in My Pack series for my Superior Hiking Trail Fastest Known Time Attempt. Stay tuned for my upcoming video on what worked, what didn't, and what I'll be changing out for my next crack at the record. In a separate video, I'll also be releasing footage for my actual attempt with some pointers and tips for those of you out there interested in what it takes to take on the challenge of an unsupported fastest known time attempt on a trail. Remember, this is the stuff that works for me, and it may not necessarily work for you. Do your own research, get out there, and have your own adventure. Questions? Drop them in the comments below. Hey, thanks for watching and supporting this crazy dream of mine. Like and subscribe, and hopefully, I'll see you out on the trail.